Hello everyone, I'm Two-Faced Teller, but you can call me V, and this is a letter. Um, like years ago? If my time is correct, I'm sure it was years ago. I saw some of this, and <laughs> it's one of those try to keep people of um try to keep people alive games. And I have no confidence. Um, also, I uh, I'm redoing the intro because <laughs> I hated the way I did it the first time. So yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I hate you so much right now. <laughs> that was uncalled for. The, er the Ermengarde Mansion. It was built for Lloyd William and Lady Elizabeth Ermengard of Luxbourne, humble ambassadors of peace and beloved by their people. Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Under their influence and wealth, what was once a small sleepy village grew to a prosperous and bustling town. However, the seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of a plague. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. The mansion has stood since the 1620s, a witness to a very long history of joy and pain. After Lady Charlotte committed suicide, the great house was eventually left uninhibi uninhabited. And that is when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things of cries and howls that filled the nights and hearsay of a mysterious woman roaming the hollowed halls aimlessly. People who dared enter its walls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, these stories remain much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house, its legend, and its curse still fall upon the villagers' ears. In spite of this, the current owners are convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, they had Briar Realty Corporation place the property back on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside await to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Good luck. I'm gonna need all of the luck. October 21st. Hello? I, okay. Isabella? Are you there? Where are you? The familiar jittery voice comes from the other end. Oh, hey Rose! I'm at St. Goretti High. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? It's the mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Jeez, we're on shift together. You promised! Oh my god, please don't tell me you forgot! You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? Yes. You chickened out! Calm down, you know I take my promises seriously. I'd like to believe that, so hurry up and get here. This place is huge! A bit too quiet since no one's lived here since, like, forever, but beautiful nonetheless. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know. I just wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors that say it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. And even if they are, which they are not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that! They might be listening or watching right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to curse you. No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. You know, not every property we sell will end up with a dead body stuffed in a sofa. You don't know that. 
And I think that mansion is where we'll likely find another one. I can feel it. Wait. Another one? <laughs> that was one time, Isabella! Loosen up! That's one time too much. Yeah. What the hell? Wait, just get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being here on my own. Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see you. Bye. She hangs up before I can respond. Rose, still charming as ever. Who was that? I look up from my phone to see Rebecca, Becca, giving me a questioning look. Oh, that? It's just Rose. The one who trained you. F for your job back when you started? You're working together again? Just for this property. We've been scoping out that big mansion down Ansem Village after the renovations. Today is sort of its grand opening to the public. The RC wants to give it one last check before we let potential buyers tour it this afternoon. Hold on. Is this the same mansion you've been telling everyone about? Didn't you keep saying how it just gave you the creeps? You actually went there? And you're going back? Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. <laughs> as soon as those words leave my mouth, Becca let out a soft chuckle. What's so funny? Nothing. It's just that I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so out of character. I mean, no offense, but you've been freaking out ever since you got assigned to it. Cursed rumors and all. I honestly thought you'd back out. Not all the time. I could really use a huge amount of cash right now, and this is just the fastest way to get it. Rebecca's like throwing me off because she won't complete her, her dialogue. Plus, listen to this. Briar Realty wants it sold as soon as possible, and the agent who lands the deal is going to get a huge bonus. They never give bonuses like that. Getting that would make life so much easier. They're desperate. I'm desperate. It's perfect. A sympathetic look crosses her face. You know, if you're really in urgent need of money, you could have just asked me. Or Ashton. We can always let you borrow, and you can pay us back whenever. I have to keep myself from groaning out loud. In the years I've known her, I can already tell what to expect once she has that expression. Becca. I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. Yeah, and they're good. She crosses her arms and grimaces at that thought. Her voice slightly ri rises as she begins to scold me. Instantly, I'm reminded why Becca excels at teaching boisterous teenagers. Stop eating junk! They're cheap, but they're not good for you. You'll definitely end up in the hospital if you keep at it. No, it's fine. Becca, like, my body is used to the constant <laughs> consuming of instant noodles. Here we go again. Does, like, this option actually matter? Well, it gives me a chance to make a save, so. Whoa, instant. I eat other things too, like a hot ch Cheeto and uh, uh, a game refuel. <laughs> I eat other things hey, too. I eat other things too. I fold my arms across my chest, mimicking her posture and giving her the best frown I could muster. The same one I'd use my, with my younger siblings when they're being difficult. Instead, she only raises an eyebrow at me. That's not going to work on me. And I saw it when you were cleaning your flat last week. The instant noodle cups outnumber everything else. You're just exaggerating. Did you even see what's in my cupboard yet? There are gummy worms in there and, uh, Cheez-Its. Everything unhealthy. I'm not just living on instant noodles alone. I've got canned beans, peas, tuna, ham, and even hamburgers in there. Ew, in the cupboard? Becca's wrinkling her nose by the time I get to the end of the small list. 
She even went a little green on the last one. I would have laughed a little at that if I didn't know it would only lead to more reprimands from her. Aren't those the same ones you won from the grocer's raffle more than a year ago? Oh, I sincerely hope you're checking the date stamps on those things before eating them. I don't want a repeat of last year. I mean, if it's canned food, they have a pretty long date. It shouldn't expire within a year, right? I don't really check the, the, the dates on things. Unless it's milk or something that's really going to expire soon. In any case, those are still not exactly healthier choices, Belle. She shakes her head, possibly laughing at some funny distant memory. When she looks up, I immediately brace myself. More words from her. Sometimes it's just better to let Becca talk until she gets... Until she's out of things to say. But when she turns her attention back to me, there's only warmth in her smile. <sighs> what am I going to do with you? She says this more to herself than me, her voice shifting to something kinder, even motherly, if I'm looking for the exact word. I hope you know that it's impossible not to worry about you when you're like this. You don't have to keep eating the same thing. If you're so worried about what I eat, make me food, please. <laughs> I may boast about consuming instant noodles on the reg like a pro, but sometimes a guy got to eat something different. <laughs> Please help me. Didn't I tell you before? You're always free to reheat my leftovers. Yeah, but I gotta ask every time. <laughs> I feel bad. Just mark it. You're free to eat this one. <laughs> And I will eat it. I will be the human garbage disposal. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep babying me. You've been taking care of me since after I moved here. You have to take a break sometime. And before you ask again, no. You know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. And I'm not going to ask you to give me what you earned hard for yourself. Ugh, you and your pride. But suit yourself. The alpha stays on the table, though. I nod in response, if only to get her to drop the topic. But I'm pretty certain I will never take that offer. Ever. It has nothing to do with pride. I've simply seen plenty of times how friendships can take a turn for the worse, just because of a few unpaid debts. I don't want something like that to happen between me and Becca. We may argue about a lot of small, petty things, but she already feels like a real sister to me. I don't want to lose that friendship over something so trivial. Becca's movements when she takes a quick glance at something behind me snaps me out of my thoughts. Well, enough chit-chat. Lunch is ending, and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Good luck with your clients. You better treat us to lunch or something if you get that sale. You bet! With a small smile, she returns to her desk and begins shifting through the pages of a rather thick history book. Uh, history... She's probably working on next week's lesson plan. Or trying, at least. Her eyes are distant, and she doesn't seem too attentive to whatever's on the page. <coughs> As if she heard my thoughts, Becca starts coughing heavily. Her hand hastily goes to her mouth to stifle the sounds. Ah, oh, this is precisely why I followed her here. For someone who makes a habit out of worrying about other people, Becca sure forgets how to take care of herself. Hey, you sure you can manage on your own? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. Ah, oh, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. I level her with a flat look. She has had a cold for a couple of days now, something about the strange weather not agreeing with her lately. And despite my advice to take the week off and rest, I found her apartment empty when I dropped by this morning. She even left the medicine her doctor just prescribed, almost a describe. Look who's being stubborn now. You shouldn't even be working right now. <laughs> Seriously, you big baby. I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. Stop spreading your germs, Becca. Go back home. I'll call you if I still feel bad. And you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. She offers me a reassuring smile and I can only sigh. 
Why do I even bother? There's no stopping her once she has decided on something. Defeated, I reach inside my bag to pull out the same bottle of medicine she left earlier. She looks at it warily when I place it in front of her. Unfortunately for her, this is one thing I'm not letting her have her way. Alright, but don't forget what the doctor said. Drink this on time. I'll see you later, okay? There's an amused gleam in her eyes when she shifts them back to me. <laughs> Look who's playing the mother hen now. Yeah, well... We got, like, a better reason. Because you're out here spreading your icky germs, man. Rebecca! <laughs> okay, okay. I won't tease anymore. I'll make sure to drink it, Mom. Before I can retort, she casts another look at the clock. I take that as a sign to finally end the conversation in my short visit. With a small wave, I leave her alone to her classroom and her thoughts. I hail a passing taxi to take me to the property as soon as I leave the school grounds. The mansion is some ways out in the countryside, but I don't have trouble giving the driver directions. Apparently everyone in Luxbourne City knows of it, including every bit of rumor surrounding the place. In fact, just the mention of its name is enough for locals to give you cautious sidelong glances. I learned that the hard way the first time I commuted there, and it only boosted my belief that there's something more to the house. Even the news of it being renovated and placed back up in the market has caused quite a stir. Thankfully, it died down a few weeks later. The place would have become a lot harder to sell otherwise. I avert my eyes from the window once the building shrinks in the distance. We get a glimpse of the countryside soon, although a quick glance at my watch tells me we're still a few minutes away from our destination. Might as well get some work done. Rose did ask me to review the mansion's documents. I already looked them over last night, but you never know when things may go wrong. Life has ways of messing things up like that. You know, like making sure that we realize ghosts are real. Halfway through reading the papers, my phone rings again. I pick it up without, without looking, neatly tucking it between my ear and shoulder. It's probably just Rose again anyway. Rose? Guess again. That voice. Ash. Bingo. Hey, what's up? Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. You mean that thing with Zack? Yeah. He even called in the middle of the night just to remind me. No, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool. I'll see you later. What time do you get off? Around 5, 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of the Ermengarde Mansion's open house, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Ermengarde Mansion? You know, the big Jacobean mansion at Anselm Village? I'm on my way there right now, actually. Jacobean. On your own? Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see. Looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. You shut your mouth, Ash. Shut up! Ash chuckles and I can't help but roll my eyes upon hearing it. <laughs> I'll see you later. Drop me a call when you're done. Ash I'll hole. see if I can pick you up. Whatever. Bye. Stupid asshole. Always teasing me whenever he sees a chance. I'll show him who's tough. It takes a few more minutes until I finally reach the infamous mansion. I have to admit, the entire property does look wonderful from the outside. Yet despite all this, it does nothing to hide that something is just wrong. You can feel the haunted vibes just oozing, radiating. The surrounding area is unusually silent, and only the rustling of the leaves can be heard as the occasional breeze passes. If there's no, like, animals around, then you know something's wrong with the place. I mean, not including the birds flying by in a loop. But, yeah. While Anselm Village is just a few miles away, everyone keeps their distance on purpose. Perhaps out of fear, the horror of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow, it makes me feel sad. The lack of immediate human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it has, has any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place looks at night. Who planning to go inside that place, Missy? Yeah. The voice nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Not as much as it... <laughs> Starting the game did. 
Without completely taking my eyes away from the house, I give the driver a confused nod. A beat passes while I wait for him to say more, but his only answer is a non-committal hum. Belatedly, it occurs to me that he must have been waiting for my payment. I mentally slap myself for spacing out and promptly hand him the fee with an, with an apologetic look. I expected him to leave as soon as I've paid, but there's a hesitant expression on him as if something hasn't been said yet. Is there something wrong? Look, Missy, I'm sure you've heard what the people are telling everyone about that place. Nobody likes to be disturbed when they're at peace, and I'm pretty sure whatever they say is in that house doesn't want to either. I don't think whatever's in the house is at peace, though. I mean, if you're at peace, you don't exactly go causing issues. I admit they did a good job fixing it up, but there must have been a reason why even distant relatives of the family who used to own the house never lived in there despite inheriting it. No wonder they wanted to get rid of it. M maybe they just didn't like it? You never know. He drives off after, but what he said has left a forebo foreboding feeling in my gut. I breathe out a heavy sigh as I approach the house. After hearing enough of the rumors, I should have expected the conversation to take that turn. But I'm already here. Backing out is completely, completely out of the question. It's not like I have a choice anyway. If I want to get that bonus in commission one way or another, I've got to sell this, this property. My brain keeps replacing words. It's not fun for me who's reading out loud. <laughs> the door is ajar when I get to it, however, while my own copy of the keys dangle useless. The door is ajar when I get to it, however, while my own copy of the keys dangle uselessly in my hand. Rose must have left it open when she arrived. That's weird. We may be the only people here this early, but I've never known her as someone careless. Entering, what greets me inside leaves me gaping. They've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antiques, searched every nook, cranny, and crevice, and made it spick and span. All for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to the mo modern-day lords and ladies. But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it's going to eat you alive. If you ask me, they should have just listened to what other people have been telling them and leave this place alone. Some things in this world are better left alone, never to be disturbed ever again. Rose? Oh, that echo. I call out. Rose, I'm here. I'm here. Where, are you? Where are you? My voice echoes softly throughout the hallways. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'll hear me no matter how deafening the silence is. I'm just gonna, gonna inhale and then scream real loud. She could be all the way on the other side of the property, for all I know. Quickly, I reach for my phone and dial her number. It got a little... A little startled. When the phone came up that fast. But... The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. Excuse me? What do you mean has not been recognized? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? 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 Or... Maybe the ghost did hear us talking and speared her away, right? Right? No, Isabella. Don't be ridiculous. She probably just wandered deeper into the house and lost signal or something. But a phone wouldn't say it's not recognized if it was out of reach. It would say out of service or something, right? I dial her number again, hoping the call will connect this time. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. But to no avail. Oh boy. I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose? If you can hear me, please come out. Come on, Rose! This isn't funny! You know this place gives me the creeps? No answer. You know, if I wasn't getting an answer on my phone and I was this creeped out, I would have stepped back outside. <laughs> this isn't going to work. This place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I take a deep breath before venturing deeper into the mansion. Um. Taking a couple of steps forward, I notice something move above the grand staircase. What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? Not funny. Not funny. 
I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Not coming out, huh? Fine, I'm going. Bye. Okay, that's a lie. She's my friend. I can't really leave until I know she's all right. Growing desperate, I try to connect her number again. Come on, please give me something. Please, Lord. Yes, finally. Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She doesn't respond. There's also heavy static coming from her side. I sincerely hope it doesn't get cut off again before I can get an answer from her. Rose, come on. Where are you? A few moments pass until the static eventually starts to quiet down. I'm... Attic. What? The attic? Why? I don't like that noise in the background. Crap, it got cut off. Man, do I really need to go there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. No wonder I can't contact her. I'm gonna fix the audio real quick. With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. No wonder I can't contact her. But why is she there? Out of all places, you just had to make me go fetch her in the creepiest room of this entire place. Mm, I feel like as long as there's a window in an attic and it's daytime, it's fine. But now a basement. There's no windows there. That's creepy. And also you gotta climb up from the basement. When you're in an attic, you can pretty much just fall out of it. And as long as you fall right, you're fine. Is she doing this to get back at me for being late? Whatever, I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about being here. I carefully make my way up the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I've chosen a real that I've chosen real estate instead of picking a career that doesn't involve strange abandoned houses. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. It branches out to the two major wings of the mansion, the east and west wing. There are two attics here, one on each side. But the east one has been converted to a storage room of sorts, and somehow I find it less likely... I find it the least likely for Rose to wander there by herself. Besides, she never did like going into stuffy storage rooms. So, I head towards the west wing first, where a simple wooden door at the end of the hall opens to a small room. Inside is another set of steps leading to the second attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs to the attic are steep and narrow, made of old stones and covered with a thick coating of dust that kicks up into the air with every step. I thought they'd clean the place. Thank God it's daytime. If it wasn't for the light streaming through the door behind me, I might easily stumble and fall. With how old the place is, there's no light fixtures to illuminate the cramped passage up. If they didn't bother to add one here when they renovated, well, why they didn't bother, escapes me. Sheesh. They did it with the rest of the house. A small bedroom welcomes me at the end. It looks exactly as it did since the last time I've been here, full of dust worn out and faded by time. Okay, so the whole dust thing is making me go, uh, maybe no? <laughs> Odd. I thought they cleaned everything. See? That's what I mean. Like, it's weird that they would leave this covered in dust. Did the crew miss this room? Ugh. Ugh. Cleanliness is the least of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, no. It couldn't have been a dream. After all, the creepy ambience of this estate is doing such a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. I mean, you could have just misheard her. And just, you know, we can head back down, right? It's cool, yeah. And I'm sure she said she's here. Is this a prank? Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her. Well, can we leave the attic then? <laughs> Ugh, shut up, brain. You're not helping. Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? <laughs> the hell was that? That's it. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. 
We must have angered the spirits living here. I knew disturbing this mansion was a bad idea right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. I mean, like, considering everybody else in the vicinity of this mansion thinks the same thing. Like, it's not unreasonable. Something crazy's going on here. Me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. I've always strived to be a model employee, but not this time, no. I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity. Briar Realty can find another agent who's more fucking realistic to tour people around this haunted house. Before leaving, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Just to check. Huh? What's this? My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss it when I first entered the room. But there's clearly something on the floor. It looks like... A letter? Lying on the ground just a couple of inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I lean down and pick it up. Strange. No, put it back down. Put it down. The, the name of the game is the letter. <laughs> put it down. I don't recall seeing this the last time I was here. A few days back, me and a few other agents inspected the mansion to prepare for the day. I had, I had been the last to look inside the attic and leave, and this certainly hadn't been here before. Someone must have left it in this room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her, though, could I? There's only one set of stairs leading to the attic. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient, and you can put it down. The paper's so thin and rough. I'm worried it'll fall apart if I so much as touch it. But with great care, I open it, and what I read shakes me to my core. You idiot! What? What? Oh my god. Nothing but the words help me fills the page. All of it seemingly written with a crimson shaded pen. Or blood. I gulp. The same phrase just goes on and on until... Cool, ghost. Thanks for giving me a chain letter. You suck. Send this to five people or else. Or else what? Or else what? Or else I'll eat all of your food. <laughs> no! That's the worst thing you could do! I only have instant noodles! And a single can of peas. As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper and peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on a second page. But there's nothing. No. Oh, please, no. My hands tremble as dread creeps over me. The room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. Holding the paper in half, the sight that greets me next has me frozen on the spot. Ew, 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 ew. A pair of blood-soaked feet enters my field of vision, covered in gaping wounds with skin eaten away to reveal flesh bone, and all manner of things one isn't meant to see. It's too much. All of it is too much. I want to cry, call for help, but the words catch in my throat. Even my feet won't move, completely paralyzed out of terror. Lord, please help me. As much as I want to be brave and look up, in a real life situation, I will close my eyes and cry. <laughs> I shut my eyes tight, muttering fervent prayers under my breath. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I've watched enough horror movies that every time there's like a ghost or demon, they always get pissed when you start prayers. <laughs> Luckily, I don't actually know any. Prayers taught to me as a child by my mama and my papa slip out endlessly through my teeth. Because God, oh God, if you have to listen to any of my prayers, please listen to this one right now, please. And if God doesn't listen, at least I won't see the thing that kills me. A cold comfort. I wait. And I wait some more. But when nothing happens, I dare to take a peek. Only to find that the ghost, the thing, whatever it is, gone. Relief washes over me as I shakily get up to my feet and back away towards the door. 
Wrenching it open, I slip out without a second thought and make a run for it down the stairs and onto the hallway. I take a look back to make sure it isn't behind me. Any other person might have stopped, dismissed it as a trick of the light in an overactive imagination, but that shit was so real. I'm not even. But I'm not taking any chances. I'm not giving that thing another chance to catch me off guard. Not only did it give me a chain letter, but it even had the audacity to appear in front of me. It's the rudest thing ever. I don't think I'll ever feel safe until I get out of here. Whatever that is, every warning bell in my mind is telling me that it's going to jump out at any moment and get me while I'm still in this place. I told them! I freaking told them! Oh man, oh man, oh man! Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me and... <laughs> My shoe slips and I find myself falling, until my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. Oh no, don't talk about back pain. No! You! Be gone! My head grows fuzzy and my vision dims as, a f as I fight to stay conscious. No. Go away. The last thing I see are those feet before all I know is darkness. Buzz breaks the silence. I start to rouse, pulling into consciousness against my own will. I've never felt this tired before. I just want to sleep, but the insistent... I just want to sleep, but the insistent buzzing, poking, and prodding isn't letting me. My old mattress may not be the comfiest of places, but that doesn't make me any more eager to wake up. Five more minutes, Becca. I swat away at what is nudging persistently at my side. Come on. Can I just get a few extra minutes of sleep today? I promise I'll work hard once I'm up. A hand lightly taps my cheek, and something cold is suddenly being pressed at the back of my head. The icy sensation slowly spreads throughout the area, giving me an uncomfortable feeling. Isabella? <laughs> The fog immediately lifts from my mind the moment I recognize the voice and my eyes snap open. There, looking down at me, is a rose. Another woman loiters beside her, but my attention is too focused on my co-agent to even ask why there's someone else with her. Rose's posture just screams worry, although she keeps... She's keeping a straight face, or trying at least. I can't help but feel bad for making her fret. A wave of dizziness washes over me as soon as I try to get up, forcing me to lie back down again. Luckily, the feeling subsides after a few seconds, until only a mild throbbing somewhere at the back of my head remains. With a little assistance from Rose, I push myself upright. She hands me an ice pack and gestures for me to press it, where I suspect a small bump has already formed, 
If the light ache in the area indicates anything. All right, Isabella, where are we? The mansion where the evil lies. The Ermengarde Mansion. Why? Ow, my head. And the date today? October 21st? Rose. Last one. Can you count to 15 in reverse order? No, that's too much. 15, 14, 13, 12 teen? No, that's wrong. Why are we doing this? She's just checking if your injury is in any way serious. This time I curiously regard the woman standing beside Rose. It's impossible to overlook her, what with the way she towers over us. And here I thought Rose is already tall. Who is she anyway? One of the remaining cleaning crews? But with how primly dressed she is, I don't think anyone would want to clean in a suit. An expensive suit at that. The gloves alone must have cost a fortune. Her eyes slowly shift between me and Rose, considering us with an almost unreadable expression before finally fixing a sharp gaze on me. I can't help but fold my arms protectively over myself as she does so. She may be far from a cleaning crew, but she certainly looks like our supervisor during evaluation. Just do it, please. I eye them both warily, but recite everything as she has asked. Rose releases a breath of relief once I'm done. <sighs> you scared me for a moment there. I was about to call for an ambulance. Are you alright? Exasperation soon replaces a dull ache. The memory is a little fuzzy, but the attic and feet- There- there was someone, Rose. In the attic. Gross feet. Someone? You mean a client? Oh, that's unlikely. It, it's probably just one of the cleaning crews. Not unless they're- Their feet have been turned to like- I don't even know what. It's just messed up, dude. The boss sent a few of them back this morning for some last minute- No, not any of those. They're- Ugh. I'm not actually sure. Wait, didn't I call you? You said you were in the attic when you answered. That's why I went there in the first place. Both Rose and the lady look at me like I've just grown another head. Did I say something weird? Why are you guys- Why are you guys' hands like that? It's making me nervous. Rose quickly casts an apologetic smile at the woman before the awkward silence stretches on further. It's her saleswoman smile, the same one she taught me back when I was still her trainee. I should show this to troublesome clients or just to avoid trouble in general, she advised. It's also the same one she gives me when, I'm done, when I've done something particularly absurd that may cause us to lose a potential sale. Her eyes are serious when she turns back to me. She shakes both my shoulders, gently squeezes it, and with as much patience she can muster- As much as I'd love to have gotten at least a heads up of your arrival, I didn't really get a call from you. You know, signal here is absolutely horrendous. I was in the garden earlier and couldn't even make a single call. Isabella, I'm going to ask again. Are you really alright? What happened? I fell down the stairs. Look at how many stairs there are- the steps there are. I hit my head real good. I- I don't know. It's all a bit blurry. I remember I was looking for you, but you weren't in the attic. And... and there's... whoever it is. Then I must have tripped on a rug or something on the way down. Oh. Oh no. Do you think someone came in while you were out? You left the main door open! We are so going to get into big trouble if something gets stolen, Rose! Perhaps it is a concussion. Are you sure you feel fine? We could still call for an ambulance. I could cover for you. No, I'm fine. I'm okay, Rose. I can work. Wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses, Rose. I can't just miss an important sale because of a minor bump in the head. An extremely minor bump. I definitely didn't fall, like, how many steps are there? Like, 20? Real talk, I fell down, like, 3? Going down into the kitchen, landed on my knees, and I couldn't get up. And I had to turn off the stove. That was terrifying. I've had worse when I was a kid. This is nothing. Besides, if I leave, you'll have to shoulder everything in the open house. Alone. And in a mansion this big? Well, there's also the part where I may lose that bonus BRC promise, but that's completely beside the point. 
Rose gives me a skeptical look when I return the cold compress to her and push myself off the floor. I have to use the staircase's railings to steady myself, but otherwise I feel fine. See? I'm A-OK! -okay. The two of them exchange a worried glance and Rose assumes a contemplative look. I bite my lower lip in anticipation and if she says no... All right, you in. A smile threatens to slip out from me. If I see that you aren't feeling well, I'm taking you personally to the nearest clinic to have you checked. Clear? Clear as day, ma'am. Thanks, Rose. You insisted. But remember what I said. First sign of you looking not okay, and we're off. No questions asked. It's just a small bump. Don't worry. You shouldn't downplay these kinds of things. It could be a serious injury for all we know. <clears throat> Suddenly, a small cough sounds against the walls of the foyer, interrupting our banter. The woman is looking expectantly at the two of us. Her stare makes me shrink back a little on myself. She isn't really intimidating. Well, she is. But not in the scary negative way. Far from it, actually, her demeanor simply commands an air of sophistication and respect. In a different world, a younger me would have probably wished to be like her. <clears throat> at her lack of response, she coughs again, lifting a well-trimmed eyebrow at me in question. Words get caught in my throat at the sight of it, and Rose, as usual, is swift to catch my blunders. My sincerest apologies, Mrs. Miss. Miss McCulloch. Marianne McCulloch. I'm never going to be able to say your last name. She hands Rose her business card. The words interior designer catch my eyes before my partner flips it over. Oh, probably someone interested in the mansion for its 17th century influences then. I won't hold it against her though. Despite the hearsays and remaining, uninha and remaining uninhabited for years, the mansion's original fittings and furniture have been kept completely intact and restored to pristine condition. I suppose some people find that trip to the past feeling appealing. After all, with what it offers, this place could also be a haven for people looking to live somewhere with a classic historical charm. Miss McCullough, I'm Rose Cooper, and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We're just ironing out a few things, but we'll be starting the tour soon enough. In the meantime, we've prepared some refreshments for you in the parlor while you're waiting. If you could please... Thanks. There's no need for it, though. I just dropped by for a quick survey of the place. I thought I should check the estate before I meet with the homeowners. Rose's confusion is impossible to miss when she glances at me, and I return it with an equally perplexed look. And against my better judgment, I blurt out the first question that comes to mind. I'm sorry. Homeowners? I should have kept my mouth shut. A flash of irritation crosses her face, but it instantly disappears under a mass of professional detachment. Yes. Hannah Wright? She hired me to handle the interior design for their new home? When? This is the Ermengard Mansion, right? It is, but... She pauses, possibly trying to find the right words to fix the awkward situation without offending someone. Suddenly, Rose nudges me with her elbow. We're gonna have to check with her supervisor, because we ain't got no idea what you're talking about. Those few moments have given me enough time to clear my head of any nervousness or confusion clouding it. It is, ma'am, but we weren't aware the mansion has already been sold. What do you mean? I almost flinch when she turns her gaze on me, but I stand my ground. Besides, it isn't like I haven't dealt with awkward situations like this before. I may screw up at times, but that doesn't mean I haven't learned a thing or two in the five years I've worked in the business. The mansion is indeed for sale, ma'am. Today's the open house, in fact. However, we haven't heard anything from the higher-ups that a deal has already been closed for this particular property. If you'd like, my co-agent and me can check with them right now. She nods seemingly in deep thought after I finished. She appears to be a reasonable person anyway. Given the proper explanation, she'd surely understand. I thought something looked odd. Excuse me, I need to call my secretary. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Santos. With a slight wave of her hand, she leaves us. That seems to be the end of it. Both Rose and I breathe a sigh of relief. Disaster averted. I also don't miss the thumbs up she gives me for doing a good job, and I can't help but swell with pride. 
Still, I've already prepared myself to dial the number to our Luxborn office and check even if she doesn't ask for it. I'll be very frustrated if for some reason something has already been decided without my or Rose's knowledge. We could have just not been here at all, you know? That's a whole new level of unfair. We've been working hard on this. Moments later, Miss... Oh no, Miss, Miss McCauley. She like, she does like whole throat thing. Returns. Looking a little frustrated, but with an apology clear in her face. I feel a little sorry for her having to go through all this trouble. There seems to have been a little misunderstanding with my client. If you'll allow it, I'd like to stay and wait for them here. I was informed they'll be dropping by for the open house today. I figured it'd be a waste to just leave after that long drive. I might as well meet him here. Certainly. You can stay at the parlor in the meantime, ma'am. I'm sure it won't be long before our guests arrive. And Isabella? I left a few documents in my car. You know where I keep those. Can you please get it for me? Rose takes a glance at her wrist watch before tossing me a set of keys. And hurry! You've still got a few minutes to double check those papers. Okay, got it. The two of them disappear behind the parlor's door. Their departure brings with it a stillness to keep me company, neither welcoming nor comforting. Alone like this, it's impossible not to think of what really happened. I wish the memory isn't as elusive as it normally is. Then again, Rose already said she didn't receive any call from me. Was it just paranoia? A temporary lapse after having heard all those tales about this place? Probably. I want to think of it as such. Better to think of it as such so I can work in peace. Except a small part of my mind be begs to differ, and if I am going to be completely honest with myself, I want nothing more than to leave this place as soon as possible. I don't know what's in this house and I don't want to know. The keys Rose had just handed me dig into my palm, its jagged edges creating shallow ridges on my skin from how hard I'm clutching it. It's a reminder of what I still need to do and why I've taken this job in the first place. Hugging my blazer closer to my body, I exit the house to get what Rose has asked of me. Just a few more hours, Isabella. Sell the house, get the money. No! A flock of people have already gathered in the mansion's front yard by the time we officially open the doors. I'm not sure whether I should feel baffled or underdressed standing in their presence. Men and women of wealth and status all dressed to the nines in fancy suits and lovely dresses of varying color compose the medium-sized crowd. Their necks, arms, and fingers are adorned with silver and gold, glinting in the afternoon sun. Some even have ridiculously fancy feathered hats on their heads. I really hope there aren't any magpies living nearby, like in the stories. Those birds will have a field day in this. They're mummering among themselves, looking at the estate's facade appraisingly, with some arguing about whose mansion has a superior architecture. But most of it stops as Rose calls for their attention. They don't look too pleased at being ordered around, but what can they do about it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rose Cooper, and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We'll be taking a tour of the mansion in two groups. Please make sure you've filled up our sign-in forms before joining a specific group. Those who want to look around the first floor, please follow my partner. I'll be guiding the ones who wish to see the ground floor. Hearing this, a few wander to me. They're mostly old ladies who seem daunted at the idea of climbing all those stairs. Miss McCall... I already forgot how to pronounce her name. Also joins our group. But what really catches my eye is the elegantly dressed pair she approaches. It's so nice to finally meet you! When Chief Inspector Lee mentioned that a famous interior designer is in town, I knew I had to get you! Your confidence in my skills is very flattering, ma'am. I'm sure you won't disappoint, Marianne. Oh, you know each other? Not at all, ma'am. You mentioned something about a Marianne on our way here, darling? Oh, yes, I think I did. Nah, they must be the clients she was talking about. I might have seen their faces somewhere before, some magazine or the television? I can't quite remember. But then again, most of our guests have likely ended up on the news one way or another. I won't be surprised if these two already have. For people who are popular, though, they aren't dressed as loudly as the others, and in their simplicity, the couple stands out. The woman in particular is stunning enough to turn the heads of most people in my group, especially the men with wandering eyes. The guy standing beside her doesn't seem to mind, though. 
And if I'm going to be a bit bolder with my assumptions, I'd say he's basking in the attention. Both of them, in fact. I think they're brother and sister if it wasn't for their public display of affection. The matching rings on their fingers just cement the fact that they are indeed a couple. Whatever. Couple or not, what's important is to get this deal closed, but for the current owners can even think of cancelling the listing. I just hope one of the people in my Rose's group is brave, brave and generous enough to buy this mansion. And so with papers in hand, I lead the way. When they aren't whispering among themselves or going ooh and ah over one thing or another, they ask questions. From how the restoration process went, to the history of the place, I answer them all more than happy to talk about the art pieces and architect architecture mostly. However, I'm careful not to mention anything about the urban legend. Not a good material for sales talk, even if the entire population of Luxborn knows about it. Some of the furnishings here are actually the 17th century originals, all of which have undergone a painstaking restoration process just to return its original beauty. Even the glass... thing... colorful ones... Oh, I don't know, but you get the idea, I hope. Especially that one, ma'am. It is said to be a gift commissioned by the fiancé of Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. It's funny when I see certain parts of the character just disappear. The mansion's current owners have specifically requested that the restoration crew take great care in handling it. It's a priceless work of art and the most distinctive feature of the mansion. By the time I've stopped talking, her attention's already elsewhere. Isn't this place wonderful, darling? I told you it's not a total waste of your time. God, rich people, so... <sighs> I don't know. Isn't it a bit too small? We might have to break a wall down to have more room. Well, I think it is just right. Don't you think so, Marianne? It is splendid, Mom. I can't believe he thinks this place is too small. But isn't it a little too early to make plans when no deal has been signed yet? Never mind that. It isn't going to be a problem. We've got a wonderful legal team to handle everything. Start taking notes, though. I think I've got a few things I want changed before we move in. God, this is the type of couple and people that you're just like, God, I hope you don't win anything. Your confidence and cockiness is making me dislike you immediately. The rest of their conversation gets lost in the chatter of our companions. I don't want to make any assumptions yet, but their sheer interest is enough to give me some semblance of hope. No, oh, please, please, please let these guys be the one. Eventually, our group reaches the kitchen. Much like the rest of the house, a great deal of effort has been put up, put in retaining the room's classical appeal. The open hearth at the end of the room in particular looks amazing, like the ones I've only seen in fairy tale books. And mad props to the cleaning crew. Seriously, after overhearing hundreds of their complaints about the soot and tar, Staining the bricks and how much of a pain in the arse cleaning this will be, they still managed to pull this off. Or make it look presentable, at least. The highlight of the room, however, is what's underneath this hatch here. Oh, don't say anything yet. An underground wine cellar. You are way too enthused about that. This is the first time the guy in gray speaks up, Mr. Luke Wright, my memory supplies from the forms they signed earlier. His sudden attentiveness catches me off guard, since the start of the tour, only his wife had shown any form of genuine interest in this place. By this time, something lights up in his eyes at the mention of the Undercroft. What's so interesting about a basement, I really don't understand rich people sometimes. Right now, he just gives me the impression of a child who has seen what he absolutely wants for Christmas, and that is a wine cellar. I've always found it cute whenever I see children act that way, my younger siblings especially. On a grown man. It's almost funny. Yes, sir. It could house around 7,000 to 11,000 bottles of wine. That's a lot of wine. Truly. And the room? How was it built? The bricks that were used to build the cellar have been carefully picked for the purpose of maintaining and preserving a constant temperature and humidity in the room. It's a good place to keep your private collection in if you have one, sir. It keeps the corks in good condition. Oh, love. Didn't you say before that you wanted to make your own personal vineyard? Perhaps you could start one here. You know we're going to need space for that, darling. And this isn't big enough? If it's space you're worried about, sir, the Ermengarde Mansion sits on a 46-acre lot. There's plenty of room for it. 
We were told that the original owners had a horse stable built here before, too. There's a contemplative expression on Mr. Wright's face, but he doesn't say anything further. His wife, however, seems really pleased that he has started to show interest, if only a little. I smile to myself. I may not completely understand how these people's minds work, but I sure as hell know how to spot a buyer with sincere interest. Score. I can't wait to tell Rose. The rest of the tour goes by without a hitch. After more than half an hour, we're able to cover almost every room in the ground floor and are heading to the parlor. Funny. The first time BRC had us survey the property, I kept complaining to Rose how big it is. Now I can't even bring myself to care no matter how much my feet hurt. Maybe this is just my excitement over a possible sale. When we reach the parlor, however, an odd feeling washes over me. Man. Ooh, those whispers. And also, like, I'd hate to live in a place where there's other people's portraits in it. It starts off as small goosebumps, goosebumps on my skin, a feeling of being watched intently. Whispers in my ear and shadows dancing, lurking in the corner of my vision. Dark silhouettes that are gone when I turn to look. A chill settles down on my spine, making me feel sick, and I start to break out in a cold sweat. I... I can't do this. I need to sit down for a moment. The old ladies in the group have been requesting for a break anyway. If I can just... Excuse me? Everyone? We... We will be taking a 15 minute rest here before we visit the first floor. In the meantime, please help yourselves to the refreshments and snacks we've prepared. If anyone has any questions, feel free to approach me. I'd be happy to help you. I let them sit while I retreat to a quiet corner to recover. It's not what you think. Don't think about it. It's not what you think. I probably just caught Becca's cold and think about it. I mean, and you also hit your head, so... Brain is rattling around in there. I'm left alone for a good while, the same words spilling out of my lips in a silent prayer. <gasps> until a hand taps my shoulder. Hello! You there? Y yes ma'am? Oh, look at you! Having to show a group around a mansion this big must be exhausting! Not a problem, ma'am. I'm just doing my job. What a hard worker! Anyway, Isabel, right? Isabella, actually. But yes, what can I help you with, ma'am, right? Please, just Hana. Call me Hana. I just wanted to ask, how soon are we able to move in? My brain completely stops. The sick feeling plaguing me is suddenly gone, replaced by utter be bewilderment because I'm gonna get that cash monies. <laughs> Is this a joke? She looks at me expectantly as I struggle to come up with an answer. Wait, ma'am, I... You see... But we haven't even negotiated a price yet, ma'am. We haven't even finished touring the rest of the mansion. A sale would be great and all, but... She stops me from speaking any further and puts a hand on my shoulder. You should have just gave her a prize. I mean, not prize. Just... Just spitball a date. <laughs> Like, if she's planning on paying for it, I don't think, with rich people, I don't think price really matters. She just wants to know when she can move in, that's it. She stops me from speaking any further and puts a hand on my shoulder. For a moment, with her tight smile, she looks as if she has tasted a particularly sour lemon. Oh, please, sweetie, don't insult me. Money is not a problem. And, just between you and me... This place is better off with us than with some old lady who will probably just fill it up with cats. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with having cats here, ma'am, Hana. I'm sure there's more than enough space here if you want pets. Perhaps I'm still not feeling well, but really, what's wrong with cats? More importantly, why is she talking about moving in already? Well, I'm more of a dog person. Sam. But you see, this is going to be a gift to my darling. It's going to be our anniversary soon, and it would be so wonderful if you can secure its purchase for us. Why, I can even offer something extra if you help us out with the paperwork. I... we actually have a process for this, ma'am. I don't really think that would be necessary or appropriate. And just what are you two lovely ladies talking about here? Leaving me and our lovely interior designer to talk here by ourselves. <laughs> what would the people think, darling? Oh, it's just small talk, love. I was asking if she could help me with the paperwork. 
I try not to wince when her nails dig into my shoulder. Damn, lady, hands off. I can't help but send an imploring look at Miss McCullough, who only gives me an apologetic smile and a shrug. Uh, uh, yeah, I can give you a fact sheet and a form to fill out. She wastes no time in taking the papers from my hand and shuffles through the bunch. Oh man, Rose is going to be so angry at me for letting her do that. Wonderful. And Marianne, I'd really love to talk to you about those changes. You took some notes earlier, yes? I did, Mom. But I really hope that this time... Excellent. Hopefully you can help us out too, Isabel. Isabella. Right, right. It's a lovely name, Isabel. Man, you are so rude. It's Isabella. Yes, that's great. We'll be more than happy to put in a good word to your superiors, too, and... Man, like, if this place wasn't haunted, I'd really hope that you don't get this house. What's this? A look of confusion and disgust appears on her face. Turning to her husband, he merely shrugs in reply. That's, uh, an interesting work of art. Not to my taste, though. I'm sorry. Darling, buttercup. Art is a complete overstatement for this garbage. <laughs> it looks like a cheap prop from a D-list horror film. Shush, love. Let the girl do what she pleases with... Uh, what do they call this? Oh, forget about it. At the very least, it's not as... dreadful as the one art exhibit I was forced to attend last month. You should have seen it, Marianne. Even you would have been appalled. But I'm sure you'll know what to do with our walls once we get started. I highly doubt it is as bad as you say, ma'am. Nevertheless, you can be assured that my team will only pick whatever suits your tastes. Nothing of this chain letter sort, of course. It has to always work with a palette. I'm quite sure chain letters these days don't come in this... form. I'm just picturing somebody who goes into an, into an interior designer and they're like, I just, I want my walls to scream chain letter. Can you do that for me? It's my turn to be puzzled. What do they mean? Rose and I double checked everything. Are, are the papers I handed not enough? I want to ask what I did wrong. I don't want to mess this up. But with the way ma'am Hannah's Leading the conversation, I'm afraid that's exactly what will happen if I do interrupt her. That's good to hear. See, darling, isn't she an absolute delight to work with? I can't wait to see how this place will look when she's done with it. Oh, you don't have to tell me that, Buttercup. A smile is back on her face when she turns to me and hands me a strange piece of paper. I would still put it away if I were you, though. Otherwise, people might get the wrong impression. Anyway, as I was saying... Does this count as my five? Because <laughs> that will be three people and I just need two more and I'm done so. <laughs> Do I get a free pass from the haunting if I give it to two more people? Because that'd be stellar. I don't hear the rest of what she's saying after that. I can only stare down at the paper, at the letter in my hands. The sides crinkle in my grip and my breathing grows labored. Dread quickly fills my mind. Isabella? Isabella? Are you alright? You're looking pale. I didn't even notice when Rose's group joined us in the parlor. I want nothing more than to say no, I'm not alright. I want to leave this place. Because I remember everything as clear as day. This letter and those blood-soaked limbs in the attic. It's real. The letter? I I'm sorry, I didn't know. Careless, I've been so careless. How do I even tell them that without looking like I've gone mad? Should I even tell them? Yeah, I'm not gonna show it to Rose, are you kidding me? I... Rose... I... The words are stuck in my throat. I wanna tell her I really do. But is she going to believe me? She already dismissed me earlier. It's a concussion, she said. It's not. There really is something in this house, in the attic, in that letter. It's going to go after us. Please believe me. Dear me, is Isabel alright? Ma'am Hannah's... Ma'am Hannah's voice breaks through the haze beginning to cloud my mind. 
Rose is looking down on me, worry etched on her features. I didn't even notice when she removed the wrinkled paper from my hands and pushed me down to sit on a nearby chair. From the edge of my vision, I can also make out Miss McCullough making a pass asking a passing <laughs> food server for a glass of water. Through it all, Mr. Wright stands in the sidelines, so curious he appears more inclined to watch the scene than help. They are all as likely to believe me as Rose does. To everyone, whatever's in this house is just a hoax. A cautionary tale for children. Isabella, do you need me to call that ambulance? I need you to burn that paper, Rose, because you weren't you're not supposed to look at it. She offers me a drink, but I push it away. I need to get out of here before I cause an even bigger commotion, clear my head, take a breath of fresh air. Anything to take my mind off things. No one's going to believe me anyway. No. I'm just feeling a bit out of it. Excuse me. I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. Bowing my head, I mutter a quick apology and gather my stuff to make a quick ed exit. It doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not, I've caused trouble and Rose can be quite unforgiving of behavior like this. I'm almost at the door when she catches up to me. Isabella, wait! The, appreh the apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face, because her expression instantly shifts to something gentler, eyes softer, a fond smile spreading on her lips. Hey, I'm not angry. I know. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. Come on. You didn't ruin anything. It's not like we haven't ran into any problems before. You know, like the dead body that was in that couch? If we don't get a deal today, we can always try on a different day. And... look. She hesitates, completely trailing off, before shifting her gaze down to her hands, a small gesture to stall. Her fingers are fiddling with a piece of folded paper. It's that stupid letter again. My hands stiffen when she gives it back, but I take it nevertheless, more as an automatic response than any desire to have it back. I'll throw it away if I can. But I have this nagging feeling that one way or another it will find its way back to me regardless of what I do about it. You know, considering it was mixed in with those papers when it shouldn't have been. Rose, this is... You have to let them know about... I know you want us to get this sale so badly. And we've made a lot of plans on how to go about this. I mean, who wouldn't? This is the first time I've been assigned to a property like this. I've sold plenty of houses before, but nothing like what we have here. It's a beautiful house. I'd love to get one of my own if I ever win the lottery. But I think... Look, here's the thing, Isabella. If we are going to do this, work on something... I don't know, this... big. I need you in top shape. And the way you are now... I just fell 20 steps. Man, cut me some slack. My mind stops. What? Wait. No, I can still work. I just need to get myself together. That's what you said earlier. I let it go because I thought, hey, it's your own body and you should know more than anyone how you feel. But after this, I really think you should take a break. You're... you're kicking me out? No, I'm not. Look, all I'm asking is for you to take a seat somewhere. I can see you and let me handle this for now. You're clearly not yourself, and I honestly could use some time not worrying when you'll fall over or not. The day's not even over, and I'm already feeling the stress. Please, humor me just this once. She clasps her hands together in front of her, eyes pleading for understanding. And I do understand, to some extent. That doesn't mean I'll feel any less awkward, awful. Whether at myself... At the unlucky turn the situation has taken, or for her, I don't really know. I promise I'll give you a full report of what happens after. I'll even let you take the lead tomorrow. Fine. Okay. I'll step aside for now. You're upset. A little, yeah, obviously. If it's any consolation, I won't tell the boss about today. You know how he is. Please, don't. I don't want a repeat of the lecture I got during my first assignment. He called me a noob, and I don't even know what that means! <laughs> <laughs> At the memory, we both burst into helpless giggles, earning us strange looks from the guests milling around the door. Talking and laughing like this is easy to forget any mishaps that happened. Little things you learn to appreciate, I guess. So, are we good? I'm still not okay with it, but... 
Rose has a point. It's better for me to step out of this one for now. I won't be able to help you anyways if I keep getting distracted like this. Maybe I'll just take a walk outside or something while I wait for you to wrap things up. Please, just stay put. I insist. I'm not an invalid, Rose. You clearly have not seen how you looked earlier. It's not that bad. Color hasn't even returned to your cheeks yet. Just stay here, all right? Don't even think of going anywhere. Let me finish what I'm doing here, and then I'll take you back to Luxembourg myself to have that minor bump checked. At least wait for me to call someone who will fetch you, okay? She's gone before I can voice one word of complaint. Left with nothing else to do, I find myself drifting back to the foyer. A few visitors linger in the area, some merely enjoying the afternoon sunlight streaming through the stained glass windows. Others can be seen admiring the priceless antiques decorating the room. One group of elderlies gather some ways across from me, is occupied in a friendly banter about which one would cost more to buy. A little argument here and occasional laughter and teasing there. I smile to myself. The conversation reminds me of what I've been missing these past few months. Rose is probably right, I do need a break. Maybe this afternoon's hangout will help. Will help. Speaking of, I should call Ash. It's a few hours early from what I've told him, but he did ask for a call once I'm done. Besides, I don't have a ride back. He offered so I might as well take it. Or bribe him into giving me one. Not that he'll ever accept the latter, personal convictions and all. Honestly, if there's something I find admirable in him, despite his tendency to annoy the hell out of me, it's that. Well, whatever way works, a free ride is still a free ride. I think I'm gonna stop here <laughs> before we move on to the call and stuff, maybe. I'm like, I hate it trying to figure out when to stop or not because I don't know if there's ever a better one or whatever better place to stop. Anyway, I'm definitely digging this already. I do recall that there is a place to check. This is a timeline. Profiles. We can go through this later. Um, relationships. Oh, look at that. I think... Marianne is beating Rebecca right now. They might be the same or just a little bit. Branching tree. This feature shows the outline of your current chapter and has content that others might deem as spoilers. Okay, we'll just not touch that until we absolutely need it. Alright then. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Have a good day and a good night. Goodbye.